What's up, my people? Welcome to the Mean Green Show. I have my girl, Samaya, in the building. Tell the hey people yo. what's up. Hey, everybody. Do you have like a, um, what is it called? What? An on camera, on mic voice when yeah. Tina speaks. She's like this with me, but then when she does customer service on a call, hi, my name is Christina. <laughs> it might be different because I'm doing like gym stuff. Cause okay. like at church, it's definitely a, hey church family. <laughs> it, it's different. <laughs> hi, hi church fam, welcome to yeah. your church name. We'll give them a shout out. Huh? What's your church name? Uh, Worship Encounter, We hi. Church. Worship Encounter Church, is that, is that your, your, your thing? What's up, We Church? So you've heard me spoke to, do, to speak at my church. Do I have a church voice? No, it's the same. Same, like, I don't know if that's good or bad. Listen, man. <laughs> we had, uh, for Christmas, I'm not gonna let y'all know where it's at. And I promise we'll get to the show. We had, um, <laughs> Um, found an old archive video of my proposal to Tina and man like Aww. showing Christopher and Caleb and my niece Asia they like your voice changed like I, I used to have to talk like this to have like more of a masculine voice so <laughs> I'm glad that my voice has changed a little bit in the last 10 years so when you say I speak the same everywhere hopefully it's a decent approach yeah no my mom is always telling me talk softer talk softer because I naturally have like a deep voice like, I'm, I'm naturally down here yeah. so it's like bring it up a little bit okay, okay. <laughs> you, you said, okay. <laughs> well good well I'm glad you're here today um, you know the cool thing that I'm hoping and I'm praying that everybody get the the authentic approach from this podcast is mm -hmm. man life is life and you can win but winning is not always easy and I look at you as a winner if y'all ever hear me train her, I call her coach sometimes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the, the goal with this, Samaya, is for someone to, someone that's in the shoes that you're in now or in the shoes you were in, mm -hmm. or even potentially what you will be in. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we all can connect and grow from this show. All right. So, so let's start here, the transformation program. All yeah. right. Um, a lot of people may not know this, but you are one of the main reasons why I've actually brought this back. Why was you intrigued with doing a challenge or a transformation program, not a challenge, a program? Yeah, for me, I, I mean, I've been with Mean Green, I think like two years now. Yay. Snap and claps on him. Two years now. <laughs> Money Dame is in the building, <laughs> by the way. So if, if you drop in and, th and throw some uh, gems at us, you That's know, it. he's always here. <laughs> uh, no, I've, I've, been, I've been affiliated with this gym for like two years now, right? And my goal when I first got here, which I think most people, is to lose weight. Yeah. And so I lost 20 pounds and then I gained a little bit of it back. And so I, I started to like realize like there is an amount of work that I can do by myself, but I'm going to need something extra to transform. Yeah. Like there's only so far I can go by myself. Yeah. So that's why I wanted a challenge because I need something that I don't have inside of me yet and I need something to put that in so I can now move forward with that. Absolutely. So that's why I needed, I needed a challenge. We and I needed do. somebody that was knowledgeable yeah. in transforming. So, you know. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, this, this, this is the cool thing, um, at least to me, all right? Because everybody has a strength and everybody has a weakness. Mm -hmm. In the transformation program or just your fitness journey in general, between the two, which one's your strength? And you might be strong in both. But typically, we are strong at one and not as strong in the other. Mm -hmm. Is it your strength and nutrition or your weaknesses eating <laughs> healthier? Or is it working out is your strength and or is working out is like your weakness? Working out is my strength. Nutrition is my weakness. All right. Yeah. Because, you know, I feel like working out is only uh, it's my strength because it's a set period of time. You come, you get it done, you leave. Yeah. Nutrition is. 24 seven, it's an uncontrolled environment. Yeah. So. And I have to agree with you as yeah. well. My strength is working out. My weakness is nutrition. Yes, yeah. the trainer, the guy that, <laughs> that helps you guys. I have my struggles too. Yeah. Um, I'm curious on those that are watching this live, I would love to see some comments down below. What's your weakness? What's your strength? Comment yeah. down below, because I definitely want to see them. So walk me through, again, 60 minutes of working out, mm -hmm. right? What type of workouts do you like? Are you strength training person do you love cardio do you love what was samaya's workout i'll say like prior to mean green i liked just straight cardio but now being in mean green i like like that slow progression of like lifting heavy weight but i also am now i feel like in my journey with mean green i am very much so focused on like mobility mm. so i like the fact that here i get a little bit of 
all of it. Awesome. So yeah. It's good to hear. Oh. Yeah. Good to you hear. know. I'm trying to, to move hear. my body. Yeah. Not be well, stiff. Hey, we, we, you know, when you get a couple of these, you gotta start. <laughs> you gotta start working on those type of things. Yeah. And, you know, per, a lot of it personally comes from trial and error, right? Mm -hmm. When I was 15 years ago, man, I could, I could freaking do 100 box jumps on a 50-inch box, and then the next day do you know 100 burpees, and the next day go do a Spartan race, and I didn't have to stretch. Now right. it's a lot different, right? Yeah. So my goal is prevention. I don't want you to get to a stage of where I'm at now where it's some things I have to do yeah. or my body will lock up versus let's go ahead and take care of it now while I don't hurt so you don't have to experience what I've experienced. So yeah. we'll get there on another podcast, but specifically <laughs> today, the reason why I wanted to kind of nail in what kind of workouts you like, because this is the thing about working out. Depending on your goal should dictate the type of workout that you're doing, mm -hmm. right? If, and I'm gonna give a couple of examples. If, if Samaya wanted to be a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. all right, going to spicy hump day and sweat Saturdays are probably not the best workouts for her mm -hmm. every single day, right? If Samaya wanted to lose muscle, listen to what I said, lose muscle, right. then doing a whole bunch of strength training, eating correctly, feeling her body is not the proper thing. So everything has a systematic approach. Yeah. The question I have right now is the one that I believe and I hope that I can gain the attention of people. Mm -hmm. The transformation program. I'm not gonna say whether it's easy or hard, but what I do want a response from is, did you think you had to work your body harder than you did to get results? No, which is crazy. And I think that's another reason why I specifically wanted a transformation challenge here, because there's lots of transformation challenges everywhere. But I know in other transformation programs that I've seen, it's really hard and harsh on the body. And going into it, like knowing, knowing the culture here, knowing like to me the ideology behind what we do and why we do it, I knew that it was going to be more mental then. Yeah. It wasn't hard on my body at all. It was really transforming my mind. So, I mean, there was difficulty in that. I won't say it wasn't hard or easy. I, who says this? Uh, it's not no. hard or easy, but it's fair. Mm, it's hard, <laughs> it was, but it was it's fair. fair. It's hard, yeah. but it's fair. So definitely it did not beat my body up, which yeah. was great. And I also like the fact that if I was feeling some type of, you know, wear and tear on my body or soreness or whatever the case is, it wasn't like, well, suck it up, buttercup. Right. This is what you got to do. This is the program. It was, okay, let's listen to your body. Let's respond to it. How you feeling? Maybe we need some recovery time. You know, worked in there. Yeah. Like, I, I felt like in this program, I was able to give my body grace. Yeah, absolutely. So, and yeah, I, it was. I love that, man. And I have yeah. some of my closest friends that do great programs that do challenge you that way. And mm -hmm. it's an approach that works both ways. It mm -hmm. just depends on, for me versus whoever else is leading it, what's your approach and philosophy? Mm -hmm. So for me, if it is one of those like suck it up, buttercup, you better get it done. Yeah. If you can do that, then when you get off that program, why can't you do anything else? Mm -hmm. So it teaches you um, a mentality and creates a development in you. So that approach mm -hmm. definitely does work for us specifically. I wanted to create something that was more sustainable versus a quick fix. Mm -hmm. And what I mean, the difference between the two we could have went a little, a little bit, a lot harder and did things a lot differently. Mm -hmm. But my thing with the people that I train, I know they're not going to do that when I'm not there. I know they're not going to do that if they go do their own workouts at an XYZ gym. Yeah. But I believe what we did together in this program, this is something that they can do moving forward. And it's like, oh, I got to work out three times a day. Yeah. I know we watched, uh, what is the Biggest Loser? What's the other shows? I just uh, know The Biggest Loser, where they big, step on the scale. Yeah, yeah. that one. It was another one that I actually could have been on the show. Um, you had to put on the weight with the person and then you lose the weight together. Oh. Can't think what the show was called, but they actually wanted me to be on it. Um, but they have all these approaches. And for us specifically, the crazy thing is we did work out twice a day, mm -hmm. depending on what day it was. But your first workout was a faster cardio. Faster cardio. Okay. What was your approach or how did you feel about doing faster cardio? I mean, and that's what, the, and that's the, that's one of the places where it was more, it was more of a mind thing because no, I'm not throwing up a bunch of weight. I'm not doing, uh, you know, a bunch of burpees. Yeah. I'm not running five miles. I'm walking at a consistent pace. And it's, it's crazy how that challenges your mind sometimes a little bit more than going yeah. to run 10 miles. It's keeping your heart rate at a specific place for an extended period of time. It's like, Ooh, okay yeah. and I feel like those are the the places where 
the transformation starts to happen because it, I don't know, it tapped into something different when you got to take it slow and steady. Absolutely. So. And for me, when I did it, uh, this is when I did the a different 10 pounds when mm -hmm. I was trying to lose that body fat. Yeah. For me, it was like, I want to work out. All right, I'm ready. Like January 1st, Ugh, yeah. let's go. Like new me, new body. And then when I had to keep my heart rate in that range, I was like, I'm supposed to do more. Like, why is this not harder than this? Yeah. But as you said, it was mentally tough because how can I word it? If I want to go do sprints at Herman Park Hill, mm -hmm. I can't do sprints at Herman Park Hill. My brain, my body, my Instagram wants me to do sprints with my shirt off going up the hill. Yeah. But that's not what's going to give me the results is actually kind of walking up the incline or maybe walking around, um, maybe just a little bit with your arms versus trying to actually sprint. Yeah. And uh, for me, again, the, the philosophy, guys and girls, is 60 to 80 percent of your heart rate. You keep it there. You're in body fat burning zone versus being at peak zone. Mm -hmm. So our, our faster cardio started at what, 10 or 15 minutes yeah. twice a week. And yeah. I think we increased to three or four. Yeah. Um, did you do your faster cardio in the morning or you did it after work? After, after the, work. Yeah. So I would love to talk about that a little bit. So. The ideal in a perfect world was to do what? Faster cardio win. In the morning. But like you could first thing, no. Why? I, and I'm a, this is one of those places where I have to be honest. You know, like, I'm a teacher. So for me, that meant I'm already getting up at 5 o'clock to get my day started. Mm -hmm. You know? So for me, that would have been for just for who I am and yeah. how long it takes me to get ready in the morning. That, that would have meant waking up at 4 o'clock yeah. to get my faster cardio in, shower, all of that stuff. And that was just not, that wasn't a sacrifice that I was <laughs> willing, willing to take. make for this one. <laughs> now, if a million dollars on the line, could you do that for, for sure. it? Yeah, absolutely, right? For sure. So will, willpower, you could do it. Yeah. But if I said, hey, can you do that for the next 10 years, could you do it? No. Because I'm even, and I'm not, I am not a, let me not say I'm not a workout person, a morning workout person. I don't enjoy it. Even a nine o'clock. It's just something about, for me, giving my whole day, giving everything I have, and then leaving it all on the floor. Yeah. It's that type of mentality for me when it comes to working out. Yeah. So it could be a 9 or 10 o'clock. I still don't want to do it. I would rather do it in the evening time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it was like, okay. And it was a thing of, well, I know that means I'm going to have to be up a little bit later, but it was what it was. That was a suck it up buttercup. Yeah. But it, for it worked for Samaya. Yeah. Right. So we took 15 people, which is a lot bigger than I thought I was going to take. Yeah. But 15 people did their faster cardio in 15 almost different ways. Mm -hmm. Right. For her, what I'm getting to, it was sustainable for you to do it after work or yeah. after the workout. Did mm -hmm. you still get results? Absolutely. Now, in the perfect world, the reason why, for two reasons, I would say it's better doing the morning is number one, more things happen throughout the day, mm -hmm. right? You can go to school, kid, parents don't pick them up. Y'all got to stay an hour later after school. Then you miss the 510 class and then like things can come up. So that's number yeah. one. And then number two, just cranking up your metabolism in the morning, you burn yeah. more calories throughout the day. However, that doesn't mean you don't get results. I'm just saying in a perfect world, that's what we would do. Yeah. So the reason why I say that and the reason why I'm glad you were able to be authentic with them is you got to go based upon what's available and what's sustainable for you. And yeah. I think that's why when people walk away from this program, it's like, oh, I can do 15 minutes in the parking lot before I leave. Well, I can get sure. on the treadmill for 15 minutes before I leave. Yeah. Um, when when doing this, I think we did eight weeks. Was this eight weeks? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yep. During eight weeks, did you ever get to a point when it came to faster <clears throat> cardio where you was like, yo, this is just discouraging. This is just way too hard or man, I, I can't do this. I, I mean, not that it was too hard or that I, I couldn't do it, but there definitely was a moment, transparently, it was after the first weigh-in, you mm -hmm. know? Because that's like, you know, you're two weeks in, and you had talked to me about how different results were going to be for different people mm -hmm. based on whatever output they wanted. So, you know, you hear all that, but once you see people with their... Yeah. My, their in-body scan is like, oh, I lost 10 pounds. Oh, I lost this amount of pounds. And for me, I haven't lost that much in two weeks. I'm like, you know, there were moments on that treadmill over there where I'm like, right. man, this ain't even, it. come on. So, but I mean, I still did it. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely like a kind of a discouraging moment because I mean, obviously when you see those results, it make you want to go a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, and when you don't see those results, you got to, 
walk by faith. I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it, but I know it's doing yeah. what it's supposed to do and, until I, you know, see the results that I want to see. I love so, it. Yeah. Cause like for me, honestly, and this might sound weird <laughs> to you and maybe to you guys, but, uh, I judge my appearance based upon what I see on other people's highlight tapes on their Instagram, mm -hmm. right? So if I see, say, Jared got his shirt off and he running, his hair just bouncing, right? And, you know, <laughs> in my line, day, he, he coming out of the water in Mexico and he does this. And I'm like, golly, I got to, I got to, you know, yeah. even though I may have been very consistent in my workouts, mm -hmm. I may have lost body fat, but I would compare my success based upon someone else's journey mm -hmm. and i think that's like the number one thing that would detour you from moving forward because yeah. of someone's else highlight tape now yeah. the cool thing i had thought about doing this hmm. i'm gonna say this on camera mm -hmm. i have not shared this with anybody i almost made a commitment to myself when we do our in bodies mm -hmm. that you could not share it with nobody and mm -hmm. the only reason why i was going to do that was because I didn't want anybody else to say, oh, such and such lost five and I lost two. Right. But then the reason why I didn't, I was talking to um, my homeboy about it. He was like, that's not life. He was like, that's like your kids playing basketball and they lose the game and you say, oh, here's an award. Right. Like you can't, you can't give people, you can't blindfold them to reality because when they get to reality, man, they're not gonna know how to handle it. Right. So I knew there were gonna be moments because if you have more body fat to lose, mm -hmm. then if another person, you will lose weight faster or vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't want Dame to lose 10 pounds and then you lose two pounds, you like, ah, it's not yeah. working. Ah. Even though you lost two pounds, you like, oh, this ain't working for me because right. such and such lost 10. But again, I wanted that approach where you can look at somebody's social media and still keep going. You can get on the treadmill the way that you did, even though you kind of was like, dang, like, should have I lost the same as much or X, Y, Z. How did you overcome that thought besides uh, faith? Right, because I have a whole nother thing about how, to me, I feel like fitness is a spiritual discipline, but we can get into that later. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree. For sure. But I mean, I just have to stay true to like my intentions. Mm. Like, you know, I plan on, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but I plan on doing mm. this again. Um, <laughs> and we I knew, knew that before. The, we'll, we'll tell them at the end. <laughs> Yeah, and I knew this was I knew this was going to be uh, just uh, honestly uh, the prelude, the warm up to you know the next challenge. But also, it's like I had to get out of this. Is not a I mean yes, it's a challenge, but it's not a thirty day. It's not a ninety day. It's not a I like the the name of it being a transformation because there are going to be some things that I have to work out yeah. of myself in these eight weeks. And so me going back to my intentions of, OK, I'm not just doing this to lose weight. I'm not just doing this to look a certain way. I'm doing this so that I can have the tools to continue on. Mm. And eventually, whatever it is I want to look like will come yeah. if I have these tools. So it just it, it became a thing of like, you know, Yes, you want to look good in that dress, but you also want to feel good in your body. Yeah. So I had to go back to that. Like, no, did I not? Did I lose 10 pounds yet? No. But how's my eating? Like, you know, how's my water intake? Which yeah. we're still working on. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to uh, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, how, how do I feel about food? How am I, like, viewing my food? Like, I, there's other ways for me to transform yeah, other than just my body. Yeah. So I had to go to that. Yeah. Really. What do you think, Samaya? How, how does it feel? Because you, you, I know you knew at least half the people that were doing it. Mm -hmm. How did you feel celebrating others? That's the, that's the fun part, you yeah. know? And I'll say, too, like, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Because whereas I could look at somebody and be like, man, they lost 10, I lost two. But I also was able to be like, yo, you lost 10. Like, that's what's up. Because I know how much that means for you. And it means a lot to me because it means a lot to you because we're all doing this together. Yeah. So that was amazing, yeah. doing it together. And I will say, I'm, I don't want to say I'm naturally a lone wolf, but I have had to learn throughout my years of being a team player and not that I can't work with others, but allowing myself to yeah. receive help and, and encouragement. 
instead of always being the encourager. So it felt good for me to be like, hey, good job. Yeah. And it also felt good for people to be like, I see you. See it's you like, oh, work. not me having a little family. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's, that's actually a skill is yeah. to celebrate people even if you're not at the place you want to be. And I learned that outside of fitness, where yeah. it's something that I truly desire, more so basketball. I truly desire to be in a certain position mm -hmm. in my career in basketball. Mm -hmm. It took a lot out of me to be able to celebrate other victories from my peers yeah. that were going to these top D1s or making it to the NBA. Like, it was tough to see somebody that you grew up with, you're like, yo, I'm, I can do the same thing, but right. man, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Like you made it. But what I've learned in that is a sense of release. Mm -hmm. Because if you can c celebrate other people, it's something in you that's like, well, man, that actually feels good. Yeah, that actually feels yeah. good. And then the better thing is, is when somebody celebrate you, you kind of have that same mindset. Mm -hmm. So when I achieve things in life, whether it's in my career or whatever, mm -hmm. when somebody comes to me and say, hey, I'm proud of you. I know the approach they had to be because I don't know where they were at mentally or maybe they want to do what I've done mm -hmm. and they're still, you know, paying it forward. So yeah. with the transformation program, that's the atmosphere I at least try to create mm -hmm. with the team. So uh, I don't want to give all the noodles. I don't even know if anybody ever uses that word, the noodles, <laughs> the noodles. but I did put them in different, let's call it challenges within the group to mm -hmm. Get the discipline shirt, you know, which you see she has on repping. today. <laughs> um, what was that like having to depend on other people to hit their milestones yeah. and also them watching you hit yours? Yeah, because I'll say <laughs> that has traditionally been my difficulty yeah. with teams, you know, because I know I'm going to go, I'm going to go hard. And I'm the type of person where it's like, hey, if you're going to have but it yeah. just don't even worry about it. Yeah. I I got it. Yeah. Like I would rather not have the, <laughs> you know, the stress of trying to get you to act right. Yeah. I'd rather go three times as hard to get get it done. Yeah. But I'm, and I don't think there's anybody in this trans, in this program that was you know had that mindset because mindset was a big thing about this. You know, we all came into it wanting to transform, wanting to get something out of it. So the good thing was I didn't have any of those experiences mm. and it felt good. It low key. I mean, because KK, shout out to KK. KK, what's up? KK. Shout out to KK. Damien, they're clapping. KK, <laughs> KK was killing it yeah. in, the, in, the, in our, our second challenge. Um, with, it was me, her, and uh, Bree Ward. Bree, yeah. So I would be logging on to the My Zone like, golly, KK got however many. To, I'm like, <laughs> let me. Let me let me step, let me step my cookies up. Let me yeah. get myself together. Um, so that was good. And I'll be honest, and not to not to like toot my own horn or anything like that. Toot toot. But listen, toot, toot. and, and, and it, it, it speaks to the type of people that come to this gym, you know. Like you said, there are winners. Um, and I think also people have like a, a stigma, like, you know, they, they judge you based off what you look like you can do. Mm. And so it was it's not very often that somebody come and do better than me. Yeah. Say it like that. Yeah. So when I have a bunch of people in a challenge that are the same way as me in terms of we trying to, we trying to get it. Yeah. It was like, Oh, it was another level of friendly competition, but you know, it, it definitely fueled me. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. That Mamba mentality. It's going to work. Yeah. You know, for those that are familiar with Kobe Bryant, Kobe, yeah. it was a mentality. And uh, I think they said him and Shaq used to bump heads so much because Shaq had all the talent, all the power, everything athletically that you would want, but he wouldn't work as hard as Kobe. Work, yeah. So Kobe would be like, I ain't passing him the ball, you know, <laughs> until he would work hard. But yeah. that made them win championships because of that, you know, development that Kobe brought to the team. So mm -hmm. for you to say that with the go-getters that were with you, you know, mm -hmm. that's what it's about. Because at the end of the day, we all come from different careers, different households, yeah. stress environments, and you want to be around someone that's going to make you better. And I, that's why I love not just the transformation program, but our gym, our approach. You yeah. know, our workouts, they all right. You know what I mean? Like, we, you're you going to work, you know, but you're if you're not trying to work or if you're trying to make excuses, you'll notice those people don't stay that long at our gym. Yeah. So I think the nucleus of that is the reason why people 
love the gym. It's not always weight loss. It's not always how much muscle I gain. It's like, man, I want to be around productive people. Productive. And you'll notice the people that are here is not just people that are just holding a sign on a street corner trying to get by today. These are very successful, uh, prideful people in what they do. So mm -hmm. I really truly believe the way you do one thing is the way that you do most. Yeah. So if they're winning and they're consistent at their workouts, then they're probably winning and they're consistent in every other thing that they want to achieve. So, um, yeah. and they're go-getters, they're not going to give up. Because yeah. there are some things, Samaya, that I have not achieved yet, but I'm not quitting. Is there anything that you want to achieve that you haven't achieved yet? Yeah, All right. it's, it's in this next challenge. <laughs> said, it's, coming, it's coming in this it's next coming. one. So, yeah. No, that's dope, man. Um, you know, last thing I say about, because I don't want to, put all the noodles out there, right? I, I have no idea where I got that term. I think noodles. it's nuggets. Nuggets. That, it started with an N. <laughs> oh, it's going to go with noodles. It's cool. It's right. cold outside. There you go. Noodles. I'm going to stick <laughs> yeah. with noodles for today since I, since I brought it. Um, you know, what did it feel like when you, we use MyZone for <laughs> our um, device to track our heart rate and yeah. effort? What did it feel like the time you seen somebody doing more than you thought they would do or just more than you, did you ever see a moment where you was like, oh, I need to get up and do more? Because at times I was giving y'all, without giving them details, I was giving them a certain amount of minutes they needed to hit. Yeah. And y'all was doing triple, <laughs> quadruple the amount, yeah. right? What made you, or did you ever get to a point where you was like, oh, I gotta do more because of such and such? Yeah, that's, I think that's the competitor in me, it's like, you know, if I if I log on to the my zone and it's like, you know, somebody creeping up, it's like, no, we need a healthy go. two thousand points ahead yeah. to, you know, do what we need to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that I mean, that's for me. I mean, I don't I don't do this. No, I do do it. Not run up the score. <laughs> Not run up the score, Come on, but just coach. keep a keep a healthy Come on, distance, coach. you know. We don't wanna be trying to fight for something that is in the bag. You yeah. know? Let's not play around. So I I think that's what it was for me, like I log in, I see, ooh, this person, I see Dame, then got in the gym, or, you know, it was interesting to and see. late night. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be the thing. It's like those people that work out in the evening time, waking up in the morning, it's like, oh, man. Right. Let me do a little extra, because I don't know what they're going to do <laughs> at, at night time. Right. Yeah. So let me, let me get up on there. Yeah. So that was a, that was a good, healthy competition. Yeah. Well, good, good. Yeah. And music to my ears, right? Um, last thing I'm gonna say about workouts, and I want to slide into nutrition, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Um, working out wise, when you lift, yeah, uh, it's important to kind of, especially women. Mm -hmm. I think I said this on one of our weekly calls that we do. Lift something heavy. What's your approach now with lifting heavy weight? Because at the end of the day, the philosophy that I have with it is. If you lift lightweight, especially with three sets of 10 or four sets of 10 or overhead press or deadlift, mm -hmm. if you lift in light and we're not beating our body up with a whole bunch of cardio, how are you going to get your heart rate up? Right. How did you feel lifting heavier weight and did it work for you? Um, I love lifting heavy, heavy weight. Um, I think for me, it was because I wanted to lift heavier and I know that my body, because well, Beast Mode Games was different. I definitely pushed my body to limit. <laughs> but in terms of like PRing and things of that nature, like I haven't gotten there yet because of like my mobility and stretching. So it's like I wanna I wanna live heavy. I like to live heavy. For me, like the it wasn't a challenge of wanting to lift heavy or lifting heavier. It was making sure I was taking care of the mobility part Around piece. It. Yeah, because I mean that's how I would get like injured or, mm. you know, get back pains or get this pain, that pain, because I'm not, you know, properly stretched out. But I, I love lifting heavy. Yeah. yeah. And also was able to put to bed the, you know, if you lift heavy, then you'll get all bulky Did or you whatever. you feel like you were getting is. all bulky and stuff? Yeah, no. And it's like in some places, it's like, yeah, I'm trying to bulk. Right. <laughs> I, I am. But no, I didn't feel like, you know, She-Hulk or something like that, which, I mean, it's not a bad look. Right. But... Yeah. Well, I was looking, I think, I don't know what class it was. I just remember Ariel Ruby was there. I think you were over here. And I was, it was a very proud moment for me because depending on the week of the program and mm -hmm. especially towards the end of the cycle, mm -hmm. we lift heavier weight, which means you need more time to rest. Yeah. And sometimes it's tough when I see someone do a bench press and they do 10 reps real quick and they wait 10 seconds, like, oh, I'm going to do another 10. Well, 
we didn't get better, oh, right? Because yeah. you didn't go heavy enough. If you go heavy enough, then your body needs to recover. If your body's recovering, that means the muscle fibers broke down, which means once we feel it correctly, we're gonna come back stronger and defined, right? Nerd. So, a little nerd. <laughs> but, um, so when I seen y'all doing, I, I remember like, I think I went to Ariel or something. I was like, come on, we're gonna work. She's like, hey, I'm in my rest, I'm resting. <laughs> and I was like, yes, yeah. yes. And, um, but again, I think the point that I, hopefully cover with everybody in this last group was when Samaya did a heavy, I don't know, power clean. She mm -hmm. did three power cleans. She got up maybe to her green, or they might not know the colors, <laughs> but they might have, she might have got over to 70 to 90%. And yeah. when she got there, while she's resting for the next two minutes, guess where she's at? Right there. Body fat burning is yeah. all. So instead of you being, take care of money, instead of you running for three hours straight because you're trying to, no, she lifted heavy weight, three reps, mm -hmm. and then she waited for about 90 seconds, and in that 90 seconds, she was burning body fat, then three more reps. Three yeah. reps takes you what, 15 seconds? Yeah. So out of your two sets of 15 seconds, that's 30 seconds, mm -hmm. 90 minutes for your recovery periods, that's three minutes. So three minutes and 30, three minutes and 30 seconds, you did six lifts, and majority of that time, you was in body fat burning zone. Yeah. That's why you don't have to beat your body up to be in body fat burning zone if you lift the heavier weight. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, with the program doing the flex on Saturdays, because I was nervous about that. I was like, man, like, I'm probably not gonna. I was nervous too. <laughs> Go ahead, really? I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay, I was like, man, I'm, I'm not gonna burn calories or, you know, cause I'm not, I'm not running. I know I'm not, you know, doing like heavy conditioning. I'm just doing. Oh, he scared me. He left in the That's Bluetooth. That scared me. So. <laughs> um, like right. doing the, the incline before, you know, but even that, I, my, I didn't get up in the, in the, mm -hmm. on those Saturdays, I did not get in the red and yellow very much. Mm -hmm. And so I was nervous about like, oh man, that means I'm not going to burn, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. And I remember, and it was, man, those workouts are taking me like Take two a long hours. Time. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, a long time. And I realized like, you know, putting on the weight and, and doing all that stuff gradually and controlling it. It's like, ooh, I needed my 90 seconds yeah. to recover before I added on and kept going. And I remember being like, uh, you asked me like, how did it go um, after each one? But specifically the first one, it's like, you know, how did it go? I'm like, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't really, I don't feel like I did a lot, and then you pulled up the my zone, and you're like, no, this is, <laughs> this is exactly. I don't think I'm weird. I'm pulling up people's my zone, but I do. And I was like, oh, I forgot he could see that. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, so I started to enjoy that, you know, not more than hit and conditioning, but starting to find a love in the slow burn. Yeah. Yeah. And my fear was, that's exactly the second part you just said, that was my fear. Sometimes people see they can get success mm -hmm. from just lifting, and then they, oh, I don't need to do conditioning. Yeah, no. Because you need both. Yeah. You, you need conditioning and you need your strength training. You can't just do strength training and no condition. You can't just do conditioning and no strength training. It's a combination. That's why we call it strength and conditioning. So, but uh, you rocked it, obviously. So, all right. Yeah, I figured that out in the Beast Mode games. Like, oh, I can't just be lifting. <laughs> Got to gotta be keep both. Condition too. And, and you know what? The cool thing, what I say about conditioning, of course, we get to a point of aesthetics, the way that we want to look, but mm -hmm. also our health, yeah, right? Our, you know, our, uh, the American Heart Association um, states that we should do at least three workouts a week. Mm -hmm. That's over, I think it's uh, 75 minutes of vigorous exercise a week. Yeah. So if you're doing, what's that, 15, 15, 15, 15 four days a week? Is that 15, 15? Four or five days, five, five days five a week days. of 15 minute workouts or 60 minutes of, um, you know, just straight walking or something like that. Yeah. But either way, you need cardio to make your heart pump, to make sure it's strong and yeah. shooting the way it needs to shoot. And that has helped me, I'll say, I mean, in particular in the last two years, because that's when it's gotten better. But I don't know if you guys know, like I have asthma before I had like chronic asthma. Like, I mean, I could count on every year having bronchitis, having to go to the, to the ER, having that. to get steroid shots, like a lot. So this conditioning piece and building up that endurance has helped my asthma tremendously. Wow. Did yeah. you have your asthma pump at the Beast Mode game? I did. Did I always, I always bring it, I always take it. Like, you'll see me like, you know, but it's really more so now because of this, this weather. I've never seen it. I don't, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. But before it was like, I can't, I can't do this. Wow, shout yeah. out. That's, see, and that's the thing that I, I, 
I know that's not what everybody wants to put on their Instagram, <laughs> right? But that's what I'm super proud about. Yeah. You know, those doctor reports, uh, overcoming diabetes. Doctors say you had to have a prescription. Now they're not t like those are the victories that I love celebrating too. So mm -hmm. congratulations, that's awesome. Thanks. Nutrition. Ooh. All right, yeah. this is not the fun part for some because for some it was easy. Yeah. Uh, I think 30%, I would say 20% of the people that did this last transformation, they, they, they were cool with the, the work and uh, the nutrition part. They didn't want to work out. Oh, that's now, crazy. But a lot of people have been working out with this. So 80% wanted to work out and they're like, uh, the nutrition part. Uh. So the nutrition part for you, uh, yeah. what, what was your, your struggle? Honestly, this, this is really where the transforming happened mm -hmm. because it was, I don't want to, I mean, I mean, it was, it was re undoing a lot of things that I learned about food and about the way that I eat and the way that I feel myself. So like, you know, just like the, even the whole concept of cheat meals and I mean, there are no cheat meals. <laughs> I'll make that clear. There are no cheat meals on this, on this challenge. Um, but just Real the, time. yeah, just the idea of like what a cheat meal is, what healthy is and understanding like, you know, half of the time it's not even, it is what you eat. I mean, not even, not say that. It is what you eat, but it's like how much of it you're eating. Yeah. Like there'll be times where like, yeah, I'm eating salmon. I'm eating salmon and rice and, and maybe some broccoli. Maybe I'll have like a slice of bread or something on the side. This is pre-challenge. Yeah. But eating four ounces of salmon, four ounces, not cooked in butter, you know, Those. not with a whole bunch of crazy seasoning on it, rice, even four ounces of rice and, you know, however yeah. much, if I have a vegetable and, you know, bread versus like before the challenge, I might eat like, I was realizing like, dang, I might've ate like eight ounces Easy. Of, of salmon, just downed it. Eight ounces of rice, which, you know, and I'm for specific people and their goals, that might be okay for them, but not for me yeah. to eat at 8.30 at night, you know just overeating and then I might, you know, go sneak a couple more pieces of whatever. Or if I'm eating chicken wings, it's like, oh yeah, protein, but how much fat is on that? Like, this is not the, you know, the, the best choice that you can make. And you really think, you know, Straight up. you're doing the right thing. And it's like, no. So it's, it's, it's unlearning that, that part of it. Y'all should be like, <laughs> in the comments, like, dang. <clears throat> I'm gonna say, damn, damn, <laughs> that was real, you know? Yeah. And for me, that connects with me because I, I did the same thing, right? I, Texas Roadhouse, we don't have a lot of restaurants in Austin. <laughs> so we go to Texas Roadhouse and protein, steak. Yeah. Give me the real buy. And then until I started doing the different 10 pounds, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they are both steaks, but the amount of fat that's in the ribeye yeah. versus what's in the New York strip is totally different. Yeah. So I'm gonna use all the fats in one ribeye but what did I eat earlier that day? Right. Did I already hit my fats for the day? So, I mean, there are so many different things, but okay, I want to say it like this, Samaya, to, mm. to everybody that's listening and watching. I don't want to sound like a prick. <laughs> so in the transformation program, this past one, I know we're going to do another <clears> one. <throat> I think we're going to do a 10 or 12 week at some point of the year in 2024, mm -hmm. but it's only eight weeks. Right. And when I say only eight, I know to you guys that are doing this, like, man, that's a, a long, long time. time. Yeah. But for me or, you know, the last one was Stephanie as a nutrition coach. Yeah. We have decades of programming that you've had and experiences that you've had with nutrition. So now look at it from that lens. You're 35 and for the last three decades and a half, you thought this was a certain way and we only have eight weeks to not only change your mind, but to gain your trust and for you to implement consistency. So now that window looks like eight weeks is a lot shorter, right? Really? Because at the end of the day, again, not to sound like a prick, some of you might hit it out in that first day and it's like a first week and it's like, oh, this works. But what happens if it didn't work that first week and we have to change the macros a little bit? Oh, we need mm -hmm. to increase your protein or maybe you're working out an extra 30 minutes and we didn't know you were gonna do that extra 30 minutes this week, so now we're gonna recalibrate and do this. So mm -hmm. sometimes it might take three to four weeks to kind of, oh, this works right. for you. Yeah, what works for you, yeah. That's it. That's the thing I liked about the, the tailored meal plan and then talking with Stephanie like, hey, I don't really like egg whites. <laughs> like, I wanted y'all to talk to her more. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll eat it if I have to. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I told her. I was like, listen, 
I'm cool, which is it's wild that I was thinking that way before because my thought on it has completely changed. I remember telling her like in our first like initial consultation, it was like, listen, <clears throat> I'm about to do this for eight weeks, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going to be ready to do it again whenever. Like I was in beast mode in terms of like, if that means I never pick up a chicken tender or whatever again you in the good. next six months, in the next year, I'm good because yeah. I want to meet my goals, Mentality. period, point blank. But now with, I mean, will I pick up chicken tenders at some point in my life? For sure. Probably so. For sure. But now I'm not thinking about it as a 100%, absolutely not. You know, it's like my, uh, what is it? I guess my, the education around yeah. the food that I eat and why I'm eating it. Like yeah. when I cooked, I always cook the macaroni and cheese for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And just understanding the fats and the butters and all of these different things that different. we cook food in. I'm reading labels now. So I'm like, yo, I used to put three cups of heavy whipping cream in this mac and cheese with butter and make a roux and then the cheese and then the noodles. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> Why am I doing this to my family? <laughs> I, I, I really, I'm like, oh, let me. Let me try let's to, go. let's not do the heavy whipping cream because this is wild. Do you see the beauty in that? Yeah. Do, do y'all see the beauty in that? <laughs> yeah. Right? Because you said the key word, education. Yeah. If you eat chicken tenders when you leave here, it's not like, oh, I'm going to eat a grilled chicken or I'm going to eat a fry. It's not that much. Now, when she eats that, it's like, this is the, this is the accountability that now I have to accept. You can't go eat chicken tenders and macaroni and cheese and be like, oh, I didn't eat that much of it. Shouldn't, I should be good. Like. No, it's going to do... Now, I'm not saying you can't have it. Right. But the accountability moving forward, you, gotta, you can't go to your trainer after that and be like, hey, I ain't good this week. Or I just I had a good healthy meal today. But again, uh, I believe in a, a scripture that says men will perish from the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Right? So, mm -hmm. like, a lot of the things that I've done, I can't speak about you guys, but a lot of things I've done, it wasn't that I was trying to do ignorance. I just didn't know it which is ignorance right yeah. so uh, i'm just to hear that i was really proud because it's like man that's what it's about yeah. you know learn how to feel yourself um and i can y'all haven't noticed me and somebody approved so i talk to her all day <laughs> so to kind of get to a point where we can get you out of here and you do what time you got you know i, I put my phone over to oh, the yeah, side it is. it's cool um, it's we, we saw um, our vibes <laughs> what's gonna tell you nutrition oh i think it was like weak Five or six. I, I, I think I will always remember this because I was going through, I kind of got some feedback, test messages, mm -hmm. and I did a call and I said, guys, eat boring. Do you remember that one? The video when I said eat boring? So, eat boring? Boring. Because I think with nutrition, yeah. a lot of us, now some of y'all may have it like this, mm. but I don't have it like yet. I'm going to speak that. I don't have it yet. I don't right. have a private chef that weights all my food and they can mix up every meal every time I eat. Yeah. So for the average person, the average Joe, especially if you're cooking for yourself, mm -hmm. it's called the transformation, right? Not mm -hmm. the sustainable program. Right. This is not a sustainable program. No. Excuse me, let me back up. The program is not say, hey, Chris, you weigh 210 pounds. Your goal is to keep 210 pounds, Right. right? If Chris wants to get to 190, is I want to transform you from 210 to 190. Right. So I'm not saying that you can't mix your meals up and have it seasoned, but from what I've learned from my success, to keep it simple, eat boring. Yeah. Eat boring. So I, one time on a call, <laughs> I said, hey, guys, um, I know you might have a meal plan or two. I know you may want some more, but if you really want success, stick to that freaking meal plan and just eat boring and finish this for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. What was that like? And you know, it's crazy. Again, I got to keep going back to the transformation. And it makes me think of like, um, like the, the scripture, like renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. It's like when you start to get closer to something that is good for you, what you view as good begins to change. Mm. So it's like, it was, it was boring at first, like a cup of egg whites, a cup boring. of oatmeal nothing like no no honey in the oatmeal yeah. no brown sugar yeah. it's oatmeal egg whites disgusting yeah. i hate egg whites yeah mm -mm. but after like going through this program and it's 
me starting to feel and see the changes in my body and in my mood, what was boring began to just not be. Like, I yeah. don't even know how to explain it. It just, by week four, week five, when I had salmon, it was like, man, I would have swore I was eating a cheeseburger, you know, or having plain white rice yeah. or brown rice was so tasty. Really? And I feel like people might be like, yeah, okay. But for real, like you start to, you start to transform and your body starts to respond differently. Your taste buds start to change. And really it's, it's, it's all a mindset thing. Yeah. Like, you know, if you were like, oh, this is terrible. This is boring. I don't want to eat this. Of course, it's going to be not yeah. desirable to you. But when you start to, you know, accept those things that are good for you, your mind starts That's to morph real. around that thing. That's so real. it's like, man, yeah, it's boring, but it's, 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 it's healthy. That's and it's, real. it's so many, it, that became a lesson for me, just like in life outside of the transformation program that like, not saying that, no, it is chaotic. Some of the stuff we eat is chaotic. Like, I don't want to call no brands out, right. but you know, some of these chips and, and, and tacos and all these different things, yes, good as they are, is pure chaos. Absolutely. Like with me looking at the ingredients for that mac and cheese. But how are we even eating this, right? <laughs> yes, chaos. And I saw, I saw something on Instagram. It was like, um, like boring, like boring sometimes just means healthy and maybe you're addicted to the chaos. And mm. when you're submersed in a place of peace. I like that. And, and health it can seem boring because no, it's not doing all these things to you. So it's like, yeah, I, I ate this chicken breast, broccoli and rice. Man. And that sustained me. And that is what is good. And that is good enough for me. And having to transform my mind around that. That's like it's real. not always about, ooh, that was just the most wonderful thing I That's just real. ate. But it was good to me, so yeah. I'm satisfied with that. You, when you said that, you know, it came across my brain was, um, mm. you want a family? Yeah. Yeah. How many kids? If any. Which is wild because it used to be zero. Mm -hmm. But no, I want like a healthy two or three. Two or three. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> and I'm, you guys follow me on this one. Samaya so got the boo, got a couple kids, right? Come on, 2024. 20, she said 2025. Come on. <laughs> Come on, claim it. I just had to say it. So, I'm gonna speak to the fellas. Okay. Can I have a moment for the fellas? Okay. Fellas, <laughs> fellas, you know, um, and this can be both ways, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna speak to the fellas. I think as a man, you hear like, I'm locked down. Mm. Damn, Gina, you got me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, you think of these terms when uh, what's the popular song, The Player's Ball with Outcasts? Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. do PGK, it, yeah. reconsider, right? Um, we have these philosophies and these perspectives that once you're married, like it's a wrap, mm -hmm. right? Ideally, as a man, men would think like, I want a different woman every month. Mm -hmm. Some, I, it's gonna get what? Boring. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, now I'm gonna bring it back together as you, ultimately, yeah. You want to have a marriage for 50 to 80 years, right? Mm -hmm. You want your kids to be an example of what you provide with your spouse and they take it to another level and do it even better, right? Mm -hmm. So ladies and gents, I'm not gonna say marriage is boring. Don't try to cut that out and put it on a snippet and show Tina something different. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there are some things that you're not going to be able to do to be able to get the result that you wanna get. Mm -hmm. So as a weight loss, maybe it is born if you have to eat grilled chicken and, and fish and think, yeah, maybe that is born, but yep. if you want the result, then you're going to have to eat a certain way. Yeah, I get it. You may want a guy or a woman every other week that's different, mm -hmm. but to produce the healthy household that you want to produce, mm -hmm. man, you're going to have to, that, but again, that may be born to the people that are not succeeding the way that you're succeeding, right. but you tell me a guy that's been married with his wife for 80 years. You think he's talking about, oh, man, I'm bored in my relationship. I'm right. bored with my wife. I wish I had somebody different. Not a, a happy 80 years. No, it's something yeah. that he desire out of that. It's something that he wants. So I'm trying to use a very heartfelt example yeah. when it comes to nutrition. Um, so, again, torchies look good. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Union look good, right? Yeah. Stacey Dash look good. I'm trying to think of somebody younger because y'all think I'm old. Um, all these different women make look good to me, yeah. right? However, there's something I want to do in my household. Mm -hmm. It's something I want to produce in my household. So the outsider or naysayers or my ignorance may say it's born, but mm -hmm. I know what I want to produce in life. Mm -hmm. So same thing with nutrition, if y'all can kind of think of that. I don't know if that was a little out no, the box, no, no. but. <laughs> Cause it's wild. I was just thinking about this yesterday. Um, Cause I, I feel like what, like we were getting at is like freedom. Like you have the freedom mm. to do whatever you want to do. But to me, like true freedom is when you can deny yourself to do what is best ultimately for you. It might not feel the best mm -hmm. and it might, but to me, like, especially with the nutrition piece, it's, it was like, I, I can eat whatever I want to eat if I want to eat it. But there was a freedom in, in me and like a piece kind of, of yes, I could go get this or buy this, but I choose, I choose this because it's what's good for me. And it's like, you know, in me choosing it, mm -hmm. it was good to me. It was like a, you know, reciprocation there. So I, I get what you're saying yeah. about the, you know, connecting that to family because yeah. it's like it's it's freedom yeah you can do whatever you want to do you know if you're married or whatever the case is but what what's going to be best for for you ultimately at the end of the day absolutely yeah. I truly believe and that's why I chose the word that's on your shirt discipline yeah I truly believe in life whatever you want to achieve it has to be it has to be surrounded by the term discipline mm -hmm. you cannot tell me anything that you've achieved in life and it did not come from discipline. Yeah. It, it, it just doesn't happen. I mean, we were talking about you getting your master's a while ago. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you had to be disciplined at some point or the whole point, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, my journey in life, I just, it was a lot of discipline and I'm still practicing it. Yeah. But uh, I just don't want people to think that, especially with nutrition, you know, oh man, it's, I seen such and such said, it, I can eat this on this day and I can mix it. You can mix it up, mm -hmm. but if, if you see, what's the, what's the saying? If, it, if it's not broke, don't fix don't it. Fix it yeah. If you have something that's fueling your body correctly, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You tell me one body bigger, one body bigger, <laughs> one bodybuilder mm -hmm. that competes, say, oh yeah, man, I like to mix it up all the time. Nah. 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 And I'm not training people to be bodybuilders, yeah. but it's an eight week program <laughs> and I'm trying to unwind 30, 40 decades of what you've been programmed with. So yes, to keep it simple, eat more. Yeah. So that was the whole philosophy behind it. There was a, there was a trainer um, that I, I went to like to do like a Saturday class. Mm -hmm. She's really funny, but uh, she, I mean, she's got to be like in her fifties, like mm -hmm. sis is cut, bodybuilding, all that good stuff. And she is not a sugar coat person. She mm -hmm. was like, eat the same sugar honey iced tea <laughs> every day. She was like, I said it, the same thing, your four ounces of this, or four ounces of that. She was like, but you're gonna look good, you're yeah. gonna feel good. Yeah. It was like, I mean, I can't argue with the results. Straight up. Sis is older than me and, you it. know, yeah. I'm getting it, I love it, man. Yep. Smile, you know I talk to you till you blew in your face. <laughs> Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Samaya, so uh, I was getting your last in-body scan, and we talked about this. Let's finish with what we talked about last Saturday, if you mm -hmm. remember. Um, first of all, I didn't even ask you, I don't think. How, many, how, much, how, much, how much pounds you uh, lost? I lost 16 pounds. Y'all clap it up. 16 pounds in eight weeks is freaking phenomenal. Yep. Um, the average person that gains muscle and lose body fat usually does 0.5 at minimum mm -hmm. to two pounds a week. Mm -hmm. That's like... Two pounds on that, like you, yeah, like you getting after it, right? Yeah. So to do two pounds times eight, that equals what? 16 pounds. So mm -hmm. very proud of you. Um, we were talking about uh, Ashley Brooks. Shout out to Ashley. Shout out to Ashley. I'm extremely proud of you. And I, I think, golly, was I talking to you? I was talking to a lot of people Saturday. I don't even know if this we was We talked two. about it. You the, said the story multiple times, though. Okay, okay, cool. Oof, golly, all right. Because there's a bunch of people coming up. Okay. Was like, hey, 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 yeah. hey. All right, so <laughs> the story, or the more of the story was um, the success that she earned this year. Mm -hmm. Did y'all catch that? The success she earned this year, not this December, yep. but this year. And uh, I think I asked you or one of somebody, 
how long are you willing to work for what you Working desire, yeah. right? So if I would give, if I went to Ashley and said, hey, Ashley, um, are you willing to lose 60 pounds? And she says, yes. And I say, well, okay, give me 52 weeks. How many of us walk away because it takes 52 weeks to get where you want to get? Like now is, I see her confidence, I see her response, I see her swagger, I see her outfits. Mm -hmm. Like now she probably wouldn't change it because she learned so much about herself. Mm -hmm. She learned discipline, consistency, accountability, mm -hmm. uh, even how to take a loss. Like that's part of a journey. Like yeah. I'm, Samaya, I'm pretty sure multiple people got on a scan and seen something they want to see. Mm -hmm. How do you respond from taking an L is a huge portion of life. Um, but long story short, um, you lost 16 pounds is what mm -hmm. I'm getting to. Without going over your overall goals with everybody, mm -hmm. the question I have with you, are you okay losing another eight for another eight weeks and then losing another 10 for another 10? Like it's a, it's a, it's a block of success that you got to keep together. And yeah. I think the, the challenge that a lot of us have, as I did last year, we lose the same 10 pounds over and over. over, and over. So that'll be my challenge to you mm -hmm. is if you're done with losing weight, cool. Mm -hmm. But if you want to lose some more weight, let's do a different 16 pounds, right? Or mm -hmm. more, I don't know the exact goal for you. But um, hearing that, Samaya, what is your approach with the longevity of Samaya working out and eating clean? I think for me, I don't want to say there is no standing still, but I feel like in... As it, come, as it pertains to like nutrition and working out and even like spiritually, like if I'm not progressing, I'm regressing. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm not working these muscles, I'm losing them. Mm -hmm. And so like for me, it might, you know, in this next challenge, I might not lose 16 pounds. But if I lose two, I'm progressing. I'm not yeah. regressing. Yeah. So that's my, that's my goal when it comes to mobility, when it comes to strength training, when it comes to nutrition, is to continually get better. Yeah. And I've learned, uh, church people be saying, you know, you learn about it by and by. Right. But I've learned now over time that whether I take two steps or 10, mm. I took some steps. Progression. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving forward. And we talked about it like, you know, sometimes I might be in my season of achievement. Like I, I just get really high and then some seasons I might be in my I might be in my season of growth like did I get to the very top where everyone else is no but did I grow in my personal journey yes mm -hmm. a win is a win I love it it's um it's awesome to hear that from you right I don't even know if we're gonna do this for New Year's Eve hmm. I think my sister's trying to throw me on stage this Sunday <laughs> but um obviously I, I I help people um get results you mm -hmm. know from a fitness standpoint, it's kind of what I've known for. She's trying to get me to do something more spiritually for our church, which I might do. And I'll let you know if I do it. Somebody yelling outside the door. Somebody going ham. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just heard him say, I got a six pack. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, you know, one of the things if I, if I talk about it, and I, I want to say this is one of our weekly calls uh, or videos when I talked about growth mm -hmm. and how growth is hard. Mm -hmm. you know, if I was to connect with you, sis or bro, growth is hard. Development is hard. Do you think of any growth moment that you've ever been through or people that you admire, you see what they've achieved? Mm -hmm. Look at the things they overcame. I was talking to Dame a, a couple of weeks ago with the Beyonce movie when, when it came out. And he, he was, tell, I haven't seen it yet. He was telling me things that she had to overcome from the, the production team not doing what they were supposed to do or sound not working. And we didn't know as the audience because yeah. she's a professional and she's a pro and she's the best, but she had to overcome. That's hard when you probably got 80,000 people that pay top tier dollar to come here and you know you perform mm -hmm. and you're stressing, you build anxiety, all this stuff is building in, but she looks back and she's stronger. She's a stronger Beyonce today. Mm -hmm. And Samaya is a stronger Samaya today. Simone's a stronger Simone, Francis, Tyler. I can go all, you know, every single one of you guys, you all are stronger, but it was hard at some point. And yeah. I just don't want anybody to get, as we enter a new year, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to feel like they're defeated because they're going through a hard moment. It's growth, right? Um, I think I used the example. Uh, you can probably see them. You see these knots? 
Mm. I started getting these in the seventh and eighth grade. Um, my seventh grade year, I grew four inches in one summer. Sheesh. And these knots start developing, and they mm. call them growing pains. Okay. So I'm icing and trying to do everything else. Then I grew another three inches the next summer. So it's cool. Like people are like, man, Chris, you're six three, you're pretty tall. Like, man, I went through some pain <laughs> to get to six three. So I couldn't imagine being six ten or whatever. Yeah. But um, again, it's just growth. Yeah. And it's okay if it's hard. It's okay if it's challenging. It's okay if you see something on the scale you didn't want to see that day. It's okay if you woke up and you're in your own head and you're talk, trying to talk yourself or emotionally you've been through something or it's okay. It's just part of growth. Mm -hmm. What's not okay is you falling victim of what you, my knee hurts, so I'm just not going to do nothing. I'm not going to play basketball no more, Somalia. My knees hurt. I'm not going to do it. I just, I, I quit. I don't want to, I'm still going to go through the pain. Yep. Right? Yep. But well, if I quit, did I ever get a scholarship? Did I ever achieve these other things? Yeah. Somalia, you did get on the scan the first two weeks and maybe you lost three and somebody else lost nine. You could have quit right then and there, like, oh, I quit. I only lost three, you know? But it's part of growth. And I'm yeah. hoping that this connects with somebody and they just don't quit on themselves. And this is more than just fitness, right? So yeah. that's my two cents. What's up? Cool. Yeah. You got anything you want to leave with? Um, I guess what's on my heart is that going on what you were saying about growth, the word that just kept coming in my spirit was breaking. Whenever there's growth or life about to happen, something's gotta break. Like I was mm. thinking about, you know, your wife just had a baby, her water had to break. Yeah. Like, you know, like a, a, a caterpillar coming out of its cocoon, it has to break. But either you break through or you let it break you down, mm. you know? So come on, girl. Just, just be ready. I mean, growth, it, it's gonna come with breaking, yeah. but it's, it's your breakthrough. I, I'm done. I'm just giving that stare like, <laughs> dang. True story. So we just had our little man. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to Tina and Chandler. Um, we didn't know her water broke because with the twins, you know, it was scheduled. Mm. So she woke me up Ooh. like middle of the night. She's like, I feel a little tightness. I'm going to call the doctor in the morning. And then, uh, you know, I took, literally, we went back to sleep, woke up, took the boys to school. I get back. I'm like, mm -hmm. she's like, I'm going to call the doctor. Like, I'm kind of <laughs> dry this up my leg. I don't, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm joking when I sound like, did your water break? It's like a movie that I need to rush. And like, yeah. she's like, I don't know. You know, we didn't, we don't know what this feels like or mm. we never experienced it. But, you know, to put the confirmation on what you're saying, man, it, it is so much beauty in the breakthrough. I just mm. could not imagine life now without Chandler. And um, that did go through some pain for Tina and some challenge. Um, but at the end of the day, like you said, man, some things have to break for other things to blossom. So yeah. I'm proud of you. Thank cool. you. Cool. Thank you. Well, uh, you guys are still here, which you should be. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, Samaya, um, two people you have to give a shout out to from the transformation program. Who would those two people do? These are my oh. quick hitters and we're out here. Kind of four. Ooh, she said four. I, who did I, I, I asked Ocean? She's like, how are you going to make me pick a couple? I know, All not right. two. Yeah. Do, 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 do four okay. and the reasons why. I got to give Ariel and Simone. Ariel and Simone. Out. Because they were with me every day. Although they weren't on my team, we were on a team and we worked together. That's so we were up. there together. So, it. you know, I'm seeing Simone eat her spinach and strawberries. You know, yeah. I see Ariel eating her. Ezekiel toast and, and egg, you yeah. know, I'm eating my oatmeal and eggs and we eating this together. Yeah. So there was that close knit accountability. Um, and then I got to man, okay. It's like low-key gonna be five. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Bree, Bree Ward, Bree and, Ward. And, and KK. KK. Because, I mean, after the first week, really I feel like the second week was, I don't know, we just locked in different. And those are my partners. And me and Bree always on that on the treadmill over there mm -hmm. getting it in after the workout. You know, how's it going? All that good stuff. So that was really helpful for me. And then the last person is O. Oh. Yeah. Because oh. it just, you know, she has so much joy. She so is. it's like, hey, how's it going? How you doing? You know, I see her come strolling in and like for the 730 class at the Southwest. And I'm like, you know, ah, this makes me feel energy every like, time she comes in. Yeah, it feels like family. And what's funny, I thought y'all knew each other this whole nah. time. And I was like, y'all don't know each other? He was like, I might have, y'all. I think I see. 
<laughs> yeah, so that was cool for you guys to yeah. uh, connect. So for you to say that, that's, that's freaking awesome. Which is crazy. Now I know a lot of people, which it wasn't yeah. like that before. Yeah. It was like, I've seen these people, but I, now it's like, oh, what's up? What's up, girl? Hoodie what's T. Up, girl? I actually know who that is Hoodie T now. now. Shout out to Hoodie yeah. T, putting all that muscle on. <laughs> I was uh, working out with Andrea yesterday. I'm like, let's go, Andrea. I'm proud of Dre. Good group, man. You know, um, you know, as we do this next one, guys, and I'll put the information down below. We'll probably have a, the, by the time you see this, down below in the caption, it'll be where you enter your information in. You'll be invited to an informational, and uh, you have to come to the informational and listen to it because it's, a, it's some info you need to know. And then um, we select. We selected a big group last time, but we select mm -hmm. based upon um, a couple of criteria, which we'll go over in the informational. Mm -hmm. um, and if you didn't get chose last time, yeah, you, you can audit, not audition, you can come to the <laughs> informational again. <laughs> and I say this, even the people that were not picked, a lot of them were mutually agreed with my response on why it just was timing mm -hmm. for what was going on uh, in their lives or what the gym was doing or the yeah. times, the classes that were offered or um, personally, a lot of people wanted to do what I used to do is like a lot of personal training with me and in this season, I was not able to do that and commit to that at this right. time. So some of that may open up now, but that's it, man. I'm gonna get them out. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining in with this. Uh, check out all the information below. Uh, I'm gonna even put some apparel down below because we ordered some new apparel. You can't get this shirt. That yeah. can only be earned. You can earn this one. You can only, and then you, <laughs> yeah, you can only earn that one. But uh, we love you guys. Thanks for joining. And subscribe, comment. What else did you post to say in the church announcement? Yeah, you're supposed to like, comment, subscribe, share. All there that sweet stuff. <laughs> we love you guys. Y'all take care.